Welcome again. In this session, we're going to read Mark chapter 11. We're going to be talking about his triumphant entry into Jerusalem as he comes as king. We're going to be talking about him cursing a fig tree and how he clears the temple. He just trashes the temple, okay? And then we're going to talk about the the authority of Jesus questioned. Let's start out here with Mark chapter 11, and we're going to start at verse 1. When they came near to Jerusalem, to Bethsphage, in the notes here it says uh, the TR, the Textus Receptus, and NU manuscripts read Bethphage instead of Bethsphage and Bethany. At the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. I wonder which two it was. Hmm. And said to them, go your way into the village that is opposite you. Immediately as you enter into it, you will find a young donkey tied, on which no one has sat. Untie him and bring him. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs him. And immediately he will send him back here. They went away and found a young donkey tied at the door outside the open, in the open street, and they untied him. Some of those who stood there asked him, what are you doing untying the young donkey? They said to them, just as Jesus had said, and they let them go. They brought the young donkey to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and Jesus sat on it. Many spread their garments on the way, and others were cutting down branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. Those who went in front and those who followed cried out, Hosanna! Hosanna meaning save us, help us, we pray. So in the Hebrew, that's Hoshiana. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that's actually a direct quote out of Psalm 118, verses 25 and 26. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming in the name of the Lord. Hoshiana in the highest. Jesus entered into the temple in Jerusalem when he had looked around at everything. It now, it being now evening, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day they had come out from Bethany. When they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. Again, it seems like Jesus had something about hunger, you know. I mean, when the multitudes that followed him were hungry, he did a special miracle just because they were hungry, right? When he was in the fields, you know, picking the grains of corn, and they were they were uh, accusing him of of uh, violating Sabbath. He's like, no, we're hungry. You understand? We're hungry. We need to eat. So he was hungry, and he saw a fig tree afar off, having the le- having leaves. He came to see if perhaps he might find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, where it was not a season for figs. Jesus told it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem and Jesus entered into the temple and began to throw out those who sold and those who who bought in the temple and overthrow the money changers' tables and the seats of those who sold doves. He would not allow anyone to carry a container through the temple. Think about this. He just took charge. He just took control. This is your your, uh, peace-loving, you know, soft little Jesus that just loves everybody. He went into the temple. He said, it says he threw out those who sold and, and those who bought in the temple. How did he do it? Your guess is as good as mine, but he must have used some force. How many people would have been there? Probably a good amount of people that was there in the temple. You know, it was the only temple in Israel, and and this is, you know, it would have been serving the whole nation. They threw he threw out the whole and the whole kit and caboodle here, the ones who sold and bought. He overthrew the money changers' tables. That's like going into a store and and flipping the counter and in and, and smashing the cash register. 
and the seats of those who sold doves. So not, he didn't just throw over, overthrow the tables in, in, the, in the cash registers. He, just, he even flipped the seats upside down. He just totally trashed the temple. He would not allow anyone to carry a container through the temple. That is pretty aggressive. He's taking charge here. Verse 17, he taught saying, saying to them, isn't it written? My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. That's in Yeshiahu 56, 56 verse 7. But you have made it a den of robbers. Yeremiah, that's Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 11. The chief priests and the scribes heard it, and they sought how they might destroy him. But they feared him because all the multitude was astonished at his teaching. When evening came, he, he went out of the city. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away from the roots. Peter, remembering, said, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. For most certainly I tell you, whoever may tell this mountain be taken up and cast into the sea, and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes that which he says is happening, he shall have whatever he says. Therefore, I tell you, all things, whatever you pray and ask for, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. Whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive your transgressions. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your transgressions. Now, uh, the NU manuscripts omit verse 26. So, we don't really need 20, verse 26 in there anyway to understand. Jesus said, if you do anything against anyone, you should forgive them. If, if um, anyone's done anything against anyone. Or if you have done anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you your transgressions. So I find it very, very significant here. And you think about it also in the Lord's Prayer. When uh, Jesus taught his disciples and taught us how to pray our Father who art in heaven. And one of the things that's in the notorious Lord's Prayer is also forgive us as we forgive others those who have sinned against us. And if you notice, after the so-called Lord's Prayer, Jesus re-emphasized the same thing, saying you must forgive people in order for God to forgive, in order for God to forgive you. And, uh, you know, more or less, you know, the impl implication here is, if God doesn't forgive you, don't expect him to hear your prayers. If he's got, if he's holding sin against you, don't expect him to hear your prayers. And this is, this is this point here as well. He's saying, you know, you, you can receive whatever you want for in prayer, but let me tell you the, the huge, the biggest key. That is, make sure you forgave everybody that needs to be forgiven. You got, you got something against somebody. Some, somebody did something against you. Somebody who did someone, something against those whom you love. Forgive them. And then the Father will forgive you. And if you do not forgive them, your father will not forgive you in case you don't get it. Bad news, okay? Bad news. Um, that's key, 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 key to prayer, okay? Forgiveness. Verse 27, They came again into Yerushalayim, and as he was walking into the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him. Remember, this is after he trashed the temple. And they began saying to him, By what authority do you do these things? Who do you think you are? Who gave you this authority to do these things? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. I will ask you one question. Answer me, and then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of Yohanan, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? Answer me. They reasoned among themselves, said, if we should say from heaven, he will say, why then you, you not believe him? Did you not believe him? For if, you know, if we say from men, well, you know, the people, they hold John to be a prophet. So they answered Jesus, 
We don't know. Jesus said, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. So may the reading of these scriptures be wonderfully blessed to you and uh, may God give you understanding and insight into these scriptures far beyond, far beyond those of your peers. God give you a spirit of revelation and instruction and insight. Thanks again for watching and God bless.